In this video, we're going to look at how to use the sine rule, otherwise known as the law of sines. And what the law of sines states is that the sine of any angle in our triangle over the side across from it will always be equal to each other. Otherwise saying, the sine of angle A over side A equals the sine of angle B over side B, which is also equal to the sine of angle C over side C. Now in order to use this, of course we have to know how to label our triangle. And as I stated in a previous video, it doesn't really matter what you decide to label angles A, B, and C, as long as the sides across, so across from side A, we have little a, lowercase a, across from angle B, we have lowercase b, and across from angle C, we have lowercase c. So as long as you have that happening in your triangle, then that's fine. Now, let's actually look at how to use the sine rule. In this example, we have an unknown side, x, that we're trying to find. We also have two things. We have one pair, meaning we have an angle and the side across from it. And we have the angle across from what we're trying to find. So we have this angle here, 35 degrees, and the angle is across from what we're trying to find. This is an ideal setup to use the sine rule because we have that one full pair and half of another pair. So let's label the triangle. And I'd like to call that A, B, C. Doesn't matter as long as now I know that my side A has to be across from A, my side B across from B, and my side C across from C. Now that we have that, we really only need to do, deal with two pairs. So which pair do we have? What pair do we have? We have both A, big A, and little a. What else do we have? Well, we have angle C, and we're looking for side C. We're looking for side C. So we have one full pair and half of another pair, and we're looking for to complete that second pair. So that means we can set up our sine rule as sine A over A equals, we can totally skip B because we don't have anything there, we're not looking for anything there. So equals sine B, sorry, or oh, sine C over C. We don't care about B because, again, we don't have anything there and we're not looking for it. So now we can now plug in our numbers into our rule and we get that sine of angle A, which is 40, and make sure that you have the angle with sine and not the side. Sine 40 over side 10 equals sine of C, angle C, which is 35 over our unknown, which is X. We have two fractions that are equal to each other, and we're looking for an unknown, so that means we can cross multiply. And on the left side, let's say I have that first. So on the left side, I have x times sine 40 is equal to, and on the right side, I can have 10 times sine 35. Now at any point you can simplify this, but I like to see everything as accurate as possible. So I'm not going to simplify anything until the very end. Now, we're trying to isolate the x. So in order to do that, I would have to divide both sides by sine 40. And that will get us to isolate the x on the left side. So now I'll have x is equal to 10 sine 35 over sine 40. You can plug that directly into your calculator, as I'm about to do right now, and you should get that 10 times sine 45 over sine 40 
is equal to 11, approximately 11. And that would be your third, your second side here, your x. x is equal to 11. Well, the sine rule can also be used to find a missing angle. The same, the same things that we spoke about earlier applies. So, in this case, what do we have? Well, let's label our triangle first to see. A, B, C, and we have across from A, A, B, across from B, and C across from B. Yes, sorry, the sine of B over B equals the sine of C over C. Why am I completely ignoring A? Well, I'm completely ignoring A because we don't have the angle, we don't have the side, we're not looking for the angle A, we're not looking for side A. So the only things that are relevant is our two pairs that we have information for and we want information for. So now we can plug in and see what happens. So we have sine of angle B, which is something that we don't know, so let's just call it B, over side B, which is 19, equals sine of angle C, which we have here as 40 degrees, over side C, which we have as 14. Now that we have that, two fractions with an unknown in it, we can cross multiply. So on the left, we have 19 times sine of 40 will give us 14 times sine b. Ultimately, we're trying to isolate the b, but before we can isolate the b, we need to isolate the sine b. So we can divide both sides by 14. And we'll get that sine b is equal to, and you plug it into your calculator, as I'm about to do as well, sine b equals 19 over, sorry, 19 sine 40 over 14. And that gives us that sine b is equal to 0. Point 8724 approximately. Now at this point we want to get rid of our sine. Right now <clears throat> we know that sine b is that value so in order to figure out what b is we have to do the opposite of sine. So we're doing inverse sine to both sides. And when you do inverse sine in your calculator the buttons are second sine 0.8724 and we should get that the inverse sine of that value 0.8724 is equal to 60.7 degrees so our angle B is approximately equal to 60.7 degrees Finally, just a quick recap of the sine rule. The sine rule is used whenever you have a full pair and you're looking for half of another pair. And again, just really quickly, what do I mean by a full pair? All I mean by a full pair is that you have perhaps angle A and side A. So you have a full pair and you're looking for half of another pair. So that would mean, for example, you have B and you're looking for a little b. So whenever you have something like that, you are able to use sine rule.